ready for takeoff. Welcome to Aduka TV, the number one educational program in Denver. Direct from Denver, Colorado's DPS TV Comcast Channel 22, this is Aduka TV. Ready for takeoff in three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to Aduka TV. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Salvador Carrera, and this is your co host, Julieta Quinones. And we invite you to join the conversation via, question, via text message at 720. 961-3775. You can send us your comments or your questions or on our Facebook page, Educa Radio Denver. We're so excited today because our show is going to save you a ton of money. Do you think the cost of higher education is out of your reach? Do you get a pit in your stomach when you think about all the costs of higher learning? Well, don't count yourself out until you, you have all the facts. Today we're going to learn about concurrent enrollment and all the different benefits that it has in saving you money and time. Today we have in our studio, Nelvis Alvarez. She's the project coordinator for Denver Public Schools Family and Community Engagement. Welcome to Educa TV. Hi, delighted to be here today and it's my pleasure. Thank you Nelvis, for inviting me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born in Caracas, Venezuela and I have the opportunity to move to this country 20 years ago. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in sociology because I have a very strong interest in, in society and helping the community to succeed. Well, Nelvis has worked with many students and has seen firsthand how concurrent enrollment can make higher learning more affordable and in some cases save you time. Nelvis, in what capacity did you help students with concurrent enrollment? I had the opportunity to work for a charter school uh, not too long ago and I was able to see the remarkable cases, how high school students were able to take advantage of college, uh, college courses. Um, we have this program that is, uh, I think, uh, our families are going to love. It's extremely, extremely helpful. Students can go, high school students, ninth grade, tenth, and eleventh, uh, and it would be uh, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth graders can start taking college courses while still in high school. So they can earn post-secondary credits, whether college, technical, or career uh, colleges. And um, they can e even get a um, certificate or an associate degree while, while they are still attending um, high school. Now, this sounds like a very um, exciting program that parents and students should really take advantage. Why is concurrent en enrollment important for both uh, the parents and the students? Well, uh, first of all, like the introduction, like the introduction you gave us, um, parents can save a lot of money. Parents and students can save a lot of money and can save a lot of time, even two years. So the student can graduate from college, from a, a, from a, a, an associate degree, even when they haven't even finished high school. I had a student who had to wait three weeks to receive the a high school diploma because. Um, to receive the um, a college certificate because he wasn't still a high school student. So he got the associate degree before he got the um, high school diploma. So first of all, you are going to be saving a lot of money and I know college is extremely expensive and it's getting more expensive every year. Our students are graduating with a lot of debt already. So this is a very good way to save even up to two years of, um, of uh, payments in college. On the other side, um, we have, you are going to have a jump start in life. You are going to get a great sense of accomplishment. Um, college, sometimes when, or, stu or, uh, or uh, high school are attending college, they get uh, self-esteem, they uh, get to participate in the uh, college and high school experience alike. And they have the opportunity to go to college, whether it's part-time college or even full-time college. For example, I have students who were taking online courses, college online courses, or they can go to campus, to the college campus, or they can have half and half. In some cases, you can have the college uh, uh, professor coming to the high school. So students have several modalities that, where they can take advantage of starting to take college courses while still in high school. Well, let's cue up the video and hear straight from a student's mouth. Hi, 
I'm Savannah. I'm 16 years old and have been a student at Pikes Peak Prep since 8th grade. I'm a senior here now. I'm supposed to be a junior, but I skipped a grade because of the amazing opportunities that I've had here. I am in concurrent enrollment and I am taking classes at Pikes Peak Community College and I have accumulated about 20 college credits. I've taken English 121, English 122, Psychology 101, and I'm taking Psychology 102. I've taken Public Speaking and History and I'm taking a French course in the fall, or in the spring rather. And I've had an amazing experience here because the people here, they take care of everything you need. They pay for all of my books and all of the fees and get me to school and back, which is really good for me because with the financial situation that my family has, we could not afford to do that otherwise. And the people here have helped me cultivate my future and made sure that I had a plan and I had a goal and that I get to where I want to be in life because I want to be a neurologist, which takes a lot of school, but because of the opportunities here, I now have an advantage and can do what I want to do sooner. And um, I hope to see you all here because you should come here to check it out for your future so you can do what you want. So I hope to see you soon. Hasta luego. Welcome back to Educa TV. That was an excellent testimony from a student. And Nelvis, can you help us understand what kinds or types of concurrent enrollment um, programs are there for our families? Yes, we have several. We have the dual enrollment, as you could see, the student, she's only 16 and she has already uh, accomplished several uh, college credits. And imagine the amount of time and money she has saved already, and she's only 16, or she was 16 at that moment. Now we have the middle and college colleges. Uh, it's a different modality. The student go to a high school and that's, that high school have the curriculum to prepare the student to get a certificate or an associate degree while in high school. Then we have um, the advanced placement courses. Um, this is a college, a college level courses taught at high school by high school prof uh, teachers. And uh, we also have the, um, uh, we have several modalities. We have the international bachelorette, but only the 11th and the 12th graders can take those um, courses. And um, you know, they are different. They might have different requirements. Uh, some of the AP and the IB, the advanced placement and international bachelorette might be even a little bit harder. According to many of my students, those classes in high school were harder and more time consuming than the ones at college. And then you have the opportunity in college, you are already earning college credits. So it's up to the parent, it's up to the student to take advantage whether it is a, at a high school level or a college level. I have to add that Emily Griffith Technical College also has a lot of technical training that also mm -hmm. functions as concurrent enrollment. They get credit that's transferable to a community college and that's a fantastic way to for example, get a skill set before you even graduate high school. Absolutely. When we were talking about post-secondary courses, we're talking about college credits, technical or career courses. In fact, I had a student also who was taking automotive, and he was getting his associate degree before he got the high school diploma. Uh, so you see cases like this, and Emily Griffith is obviously one, one example. Well, we're going to take a short break, and when we return, uh, we're going to hear more from Nelvis Alvarez and more about concurrent enrollment. But before we go, uh, Julieta is going to tell us about how the audience can interact more with us. Of course, we invite you to join the conversation, the conversation by sending us um, questions or comments via text message at 720-961-3775 or on our Facebook page, Educa Radio Denver. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Uh, enjoy this DPS features reel from Ben McKee. Ask a fifth grader what they want to be when they grow up. I want to be a vet. I want to be a lawyer. The answers will vary from kid to kid. But ask them this question. Do you like STEM? Yes. It's pretty much unanimous with every kid at Samuels Elementary School. Credit this new smart lab filled with, well, everything STEM. Well, actually, I'm really excited that he did this for us. I he <laughs> being Marco Campos. I grew up in DPS, and I understand that path. And um, I think it's just really important to expose students to different things. I think you're a science fair. Campos and his company, Campos EPC, fully funded this smart lab at Samuels. It's a project-based 21st century learning lab. The kids inspired us. <laughs> the next generation of engineers, scientists, coders, 
and technology experts. I think it's preparing us to know how to do um, certain things in life and um, how to build stuff. To see young students, um, particularly young women, I'm excited about um, science and technology and engineering is really um, kind of an emotional moment because you know you don't see a lot of that in our day-to-day -day work. Compost also committed more than $450,000 matched by Denver Public Schools and the DPS Foundation to help build six additional smart labs in DPS. It is this idea that we can start with our students when they're very young and help introduce them to careers to experiences that they may have no idea even exist. The Denver community has also played a significant role in that exposure through the 2012 DPS bond. Funding from the bond has helped build dedicated spaces for technology, including labs at John F. Kennedy and Denver West High School. It helps us experience the technical difficulties that we're going to discover in the future. These investments aren't just about having the coolest, flashiest new gadgets in class. Far from it. It's about preparing our kids for anything and letting them know they too can be anything they want to be when they grow up. I live in Denver, right? I have kids in Denver, and so, you know, I'd encourage everybody to get involved in what their passion is. For DPS Features, I'm Ben McKee. And welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that DPS Features reel from Ben McKee. In our studios, we have Nelvis Alvarez. She's the project coordinator for Denver Public Schools Family and Community Engagement. And before we return to our interview, Julieta, can you tell us how we can become more involved if we're watching the show right now? Of course, we invite everyone who's watching to join the conversation by sending us their questions and our comments to uh, via text message at 720-961-3775. Or you can also um, visit our Facebook page, Educa Radio Denver, and send us your questions via there too. Nelvis, such an interesting conversation. I'm sure a lot of parents are uh, wondering how can I get my student uh, involved and start this process of concurrent enrollment? How can students participate? Yes, the first step would be contacting your school counselor and also contacting the college counselor. Usually the colleges have the concurrent enrollment counselor, a person who specializes in supporting and guiding the students who are coming from high school. So we have the advantage that the student is going to be supported and guided by this uh, high school counselor plus the college uh, counselor. So um, of course, GP, the GPA is going to be extremely important, 3.0. However, there are exceptions. Um, some colleges might accept a student who is a little bit lower, maybe a 2.7, but it's case by case. So it's very important to talk to the counselor. So once again, on the other side, whether the counselor or the principal of the high school. Now, on the other side, you have you need to have the parental consent if the student is under age. Um, of course, the drive, uh, the motivation, a little bit of more discipline, and um, the commitment to really want to get a, a head start, a jump start in life. But that's pretty much it. <laughs> Nelvis, talk to us a little bit about the financials. Who pays for this program concurrent enrollment? And then how much does it cost? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, there is an agreement between the high school and the post-secondary institutions. So uh, in this agreement, the high school will pay for the student to attend this um, post-secondary education. Like I said before, whether it's college, career, or technical uh, courses. Um, many times, and I think here in Colorado, the, the, the high school also pays for the textbooks, and we know how expensive they are. Mm -hmm. So the student is going to get uh, the uh, course tuition, the textbooks, and even sometimes uh, the high school I work, uh, used to work for even paid for the transportation. We used to have a bus that will uh, transfer a student from the high school to the college campuses. Now remember, you have also the option of uh, taking online courses, so you can save uh, part of the transportation issues if your school is not providing the transportation. But um, that's one of the programs. Now there is another program called Ac um, Ascent, uh, I don't know the exact pronunciation, but it will be uh, Accelerated Student Through Concurrent Enrollment. That is a high school student that has accumulated already 12 um, uh, credits, college credits, 
can extend the high school for an extra year, but that extra year, the fifth year, can start the full year in high in college uh, um, courses. So the student can even earn a full year, a, a complete year pay completely uh, in college. It's going to still be paid by the high school. So that's another program and another advantage the student can receive. Now, as we hear uh, schools that are named middle college or early college, and some parents might be thinking that this is concurrent enrollment. Can you can you clarify a little bit about that? Well, yes, it, it's good. Uh, yeah, you will be able um, uh, to have uh, college courses. You can get a certificate. This is a high school that is designed to prepare the student to have already a, a career, a certificate, or an associate degree by the time they graduate from high school. So yes, it's another modality of, of uh, concurrent enrollment. So yes. So Melvis, we know that Denver Public Schools um, has other programs that are college prepped, like advanced placement courses and the international uh, baccalaureate. Are those different from concurrent enrollment, or can students be taking both? Um, yes, the, um, they are a little bit different because the advanced placement is a, a college level course take at high school level and it's going to be taught by high school teachers. Mm. So, and the advanced placement courses uh, take a lot of, um, um, the credit they can earn at college level is based on the final test. So the students have to work for a full year mm -hmm. and they have to work really hard and it's the final test, the deciding factor to earn a college credit. However, the concurrent enrollment, um, you can take, if this is one of the advantages of concurrent enrollment, you can take two college uh, courses compared to one, col uh, one high school advanced placement course. So if you take the advantage of the concurrent enrollment, you can even complete six college credit in the time you will complete the advanced placement and it might not guarantee the college course because it's going to be the deciding factor is going to be the final test. So that's, but it's another modality. Some students are not ready to go to college or they don't want to. They rather stay in full-time college, uh, full-time high school students. Now, Liz, can you share with us uh, some anecdotal stories about students that you helped, maybe came to talk to you, uh -huh. but didn't think that this was possible for them, but then you showed them different? Oh, pretty much every single one of them. At the beginning, they thought, I cannot do it. This is too hard. How come if I'm so young, I'm going to be able to relate <laughs> to other uh, college students? And what happens is, uh, believe it or not, many of them that used to have problems in, at high school level, uh, they felt even more comfortable attending college courses because they don't have the high school drama. They don't have the peer pressure. And then when you are at co uh, taking college courses, first of all, the sense of accomplishment, the, um, how confident you feel. Plus your parents are, you know, the proudest pa uh, parents ever. On the other side, they have the opportunity to have even a more um, um, exciting social life because they can participate in several, cl uh, several clubs. They can go on extracurricular activities. So they feel a little, a little bit more mature, more in control of their life. They have flexibility also. They can select their professors, their courses, and sometimes uh, the schedule. And many of them can, can even take advantage. Uh, and remember, every, every credit that you are earning at college level is going to transfer to your high school transcript. So you are taking advantage of both, uh, both systems. And on the other side, sometimes, believe it or not, you get to have even more time available. So I have students who were working, finishing, uh, completing uh, college courses plus uh, high school, all at the same time. Definitely, we know that one of the biggest transitions in a, in a student's life is uh, graduating from high school um, and then going on to college, whether it's a community college, a technical school, or a four-year university, and it's, it can be a scary transition. Um, and um, I reassure parents that students that have participated in the con concurrent enrollment probably have a better and easier time uh, during that transition because they've already been on a campus. Uh, which is really exciting uh, to know that you know freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors are sitting in a in a college classroom in front of a college professor and really getting that experience. Yeah, that's an excellent point. In fact, we had, I think, it's ninety six percent of the students who are enrolling concurrent enrollment will recommend this option, 
and then the students who are taking college courses, they have a better opportunity and a better, a, a better understanding of the college uh, life, career or technical life too, and also they feel more adapted. They, uh, many times they, they get higher grades, and then remember they are going to be supported and guided by the high school counselor and the college counselor. So uh, the process is more transitional, is softer, is more monitored at the beginning, and in fact they have, uh, if you compare a student who already participated in a concurrent enrollment program, compared to one who went from high school directly to college, usually the one who made the transition will do a lot better uh, because it's, it's, it's a softer transition. Now this, wh what are parents saying? Are they excited about this? Uh, do they find it incredible? Because as a parent, I'm so glad that this exists because I have two kids that will be in college at the same time. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you think how much money you can save, and once again, we're talking about the financial aspect, but also you have the emotional and psychological uh, side of, of the student. But let's talk about finances just now. For example, if a student is able to get an associate degree while still in high school, so imagine you are going to be saving two years, you are going to, um, let's say, let's be conservative. Every school year, uh, every college year is going to be about, let's say, 20,000. So we have $40,000 saved already. Plus, you are going to incorporate yourself in the job market two years earlier. Let's say the student graduated in engineering. So let's say 50,000 is, is going to be 50,000 the first two years of engineering. So we have 100,000. So in total, it's going to be 140,000 already saved. And uh, I mean, this program is extraordinary because of how much money you can save and time once again. Elvis, remind us, um, once again, if, if I have a parent in a Denver Public School, I have a student in Denver mm -hmm. Public Schools, um, what do I need to do? What's the first step I need to take to make sure that my child is taking advantage of this amazing program, Concurrent Enrollment? Well, you know, the, we always um, uh, promote the idea of the parents advocating for their children mm -hmm. here in DPS, especially we're very strong in uh, uh, per, uh, parent participation, involvement, empowerment. So I think the first step has to be talking to the school counselor and uh, start selecting what colleges uh, might be uh, the right fit for your child. And uh, talking to the administrator, uh, to the principal too, um, that will be the first steps. And educate yourself, of course. Uh, uh, watching this program is going to give a lot of light and information about what they can do. But those are the first steps. Uh, reaching out to the principal, the school counselor, and the colleges, and start uh, just trying out a little bit uh, to see what would be the career path of your child. Now, this, it sounds like this isn't an automatic thing. There's actually some action that needs to take place, and yes. that means you have to reach out to the school counselor and to the community college or whatever university you might be talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember when I was in high school that I had to, there was really no formal process. I had to ask to be accepted into an advanced placement course. Mm -hmm. Is that still the case? Um, well, you know, some, some, every school is different. Some schools are more proactive promoting these kind of programs. For example, the charter school I used to work for, they were, that was the main selling point of the charter school. There are other schools that might not be so big in the concurrent enrollment, but it's up to you. I think this is the part where uh, we are talking to the parents. Uh, let's advocate for your child. Let's empower you to make the decision to tr truly take advantage of these kind of programs. Now but it's up to the parents. Now, let's talk to us about the post-secondary um, institutions. Uh -huh. um, is there an agreement with Denver Public Schools and Community College of Denver, or what are the other institutions that are participating in this program? Well, we have the uh, colleges, we have universities, we have the career and technical colleges. So the student can choose, and like I said before, uh, whether they can take the classes they want to uh, uh, commute, to the college campuses mm -hmm. or they can take it online or they can even some school have the agreement that the, uh, the college professor will go to the high school so the student will start taking the general courses some even uh, some elective or more specialized courses at, at their high school but they will be college uh, level courses. Now this is there something that we haven't covered something that students and parents uh, need to know about concurrent enrollment? 
uh, well, uh, like I said, you are going to be able to save a lot of money, a lot of headaches. Uh, many, many parents at the beginning were a little bit reluctant to go through this, uh, to take advantage of this program because they say they might not be ready yet, but it's better sometimes to pay. Then some of them realize, I better pay a tutor a a for some time. And sometimes you have tutoring classes at college for free that pay a full year of college. So yes, I mean, this is a wonderful program. I will truly encourage parents to just inform yourself about all the benefits. I think it's also important for students to hear from other students that are taking yes. advantage of this program and all the benefits that they've been able to you know, take advantage of. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any way for parents uh, and, and students to interact with other parents and students that are considering this program? Well, uh, if this program will be the first step. Then you have other students talk to your counselors and go also to the colleges. The uh, career counselors, the um, uh, concurrent enrollment counselors at college level, they can give you a, a lot of information about it. And plus, it's free, right? Yes. I heard that they even yes. pay for the textbooks, which can become yes. very expensive oh, for your yes. college student. I think one textbook easily can go over $100 easily. Yes. Right. Is there a place where a parent can go and get more information. Do you know of a website or, or where can people get more well, information? Well, you can this? go online. Yeah, definitely. You can go online and look for a concurrent enrollment here in Colorado. Now, this is a program that is nationwide, but in Colorado, it's free. In some other states, there might be a fraction of the of the cost that the parent will have to pay. But here, just go online and look for concurrent enrollment, and you will be able to find all the information you need. Well, Nelvis, thank you so much for being here today. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, thank you again for giving us all this information. I'm sure a lot of parents are uh, just biting at the bit to try and get some more information and get their kids into this program before they even graduate high school. Well, I hope this information on concurrent enrollment was helpful for you and your son or daughter. Uh, it sounds like this may be a great way to both save you time and money, which is an incredible thing. We're going to return and we're going to continue our conversation about the benefits of concurrent enrollment, but this time in Spanish. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, and to send us off, please enjoy this special DPS reel from Ben McKee. Tell your child often, I believe in you and I know you can do it. Welcome back to school. It's the start of a new calendar year. I'm Susana Cordova, the acting superintendent super excited for second semester to get kicked off. Estamos aquí dispuestos para servirles a todos ustedes y sus hijos. Uh, es algo muy importante para mí como una latina uh, estar aquí para asegurar que todos nuestros alumnos de cualquier idioma están en nuestras escuelas para tener éxito. I think the most important thing um, both about me and about our team and the work that we're doing is uh, I'm so committed to the work that happens in our schools on a daily basis. I have grown up inside DPS. I'm a DPS grad, and every time I'm in a classroom, it just reminds me how critical it is that all of us, if we work in a school or if we work supporting a school, we're putting all of our energy into making sure that every child succeeds. I'm a DPS parent myself, and I think the most important thing that I can communicate to our parents is there's no time to waste. Uh, my daughter's in ninth grade. She has big things happening this semester coming up. I want everyone to be making sure that she's on track for 10th grade. And as the acting superintendent, I want to make sure we're doing that for the parents of all of our 90,000 kids. I was a DPS kid. I never could have imagined that my life could be the way it is today. It's 100% because of the education that I received in the Denver Public Schools. And we, we have the opportunity to do that for kids every day. And it's so important for our students to recognize and understand, you just don't know where your life is going to take you, but it is your education that will get you there. We want more, we want more. The best thing that we can do now in 2016 is invest in our entire community, in our kids, in our teachers, in our leaders. Um, the role that the Denver Public Schools plays in our city is such a critical role, um, and it's worthy of the investment. We have big work to do, we have difficult choices that we have to make, but it's so important that we're pulling together as a community and as a team. <laughs>